Have you heard of Quest Show? John Gibbons. Booyah. <laughs> Booyah. John Booyah Gibbons. <laughs> Lizzie Hiya Doyle. Hiya. <laughs> is that going to be your middle I've just done it for you, Liz. Thanks. Um, this is the show, and I'm sure I remember the format of this, John, where we get them, the viewers, to, uh, to vote for players we've put in front of them who they might like to sign for Liverpool in the not too distant future. They got four names in a category of defence, midfield and attack. They voted on them all morning and we're going to chat about those players. I've now got to remember without getting up on my screen, which, which I gave to them. Um, should we start with defence? I know who won, but I put forward names such as Maguire, Alves, another fella, and the one who won was Junior Firpo, Lizzie. Now, what do you, what can you, would you like, no, actually I don't know, would you like, what do you think of Junior Firpo? Is he, is he a Liverpool kind of guy? Um, well, Stalik or what else I, do, I don't actually, I've got to admit, I don't know too much about him, but I think... You've been too modest, as I know. I, I mean, I have researched the man inside, I was in the last hour. Uh, no, basically, so what I've, what I've seen of him uh, come through the ranks at Real Betis, uh, only young, about, I think he's 22, and I've watched his YouTube reel, um, and he looks quite attacking, he looks like he plays decent football, but obviously left back, but um, just being informed, he plays a lot of left wing, um, which is supposed to change your mind about the idea of him, obviously, because I haven't watched uh, La Liga week in week out to know what he's all about, but from what I've seen, it makes it more interesting because um, the rumours and, and the headlines are suggesting there's a 45 million release clause. Yeah. And I just think, you know, I personally think we've got the best left back in Europe already. Um, I don't think you pay 45 million pounds for someone to come second to him personally. But if he can play left wing, maybe, I don't know, maybe I there is a space for him. I think that's the thing. I mean, that's it's the versatility thing. We, we keep hearing this from the journalists, so there might be actually be... I mean, we're not speculating on this show as whether there's anything in this one or not, but he would be a reasonable fit, John, if he could cover those two positions. And there is the additional fact that 45 mil is the release clause. That's not necessarily what he's worth in the market. Yeah, I did wonder where that, where that figure had come from. Why are they talking such a high number for him? And then when you hear it's the release clause, it sort of makes more sense. I would imagine that Liverpool are trying to... You know, if they are interested, get him, get him in for less than that. It's in, it is interesting to me how long this name's kind of stuck around because it's it's not like it's a household name. So, you know, sometimes with transfers, you think, well, they need a left back. He's a left back who's looking to move and they're putting two and two together. I think if you're putting two and two together, you're not, Junior Firpo's not in the <laughs> equation, do you know what I mean? A, fir so, a Firpo does sound like a household good, though, doesn't it? <laughs> it's the latest thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's get, the get, successor to Alexa, it's a Firpo. <laughs> Chats get, away get in the corner. now, helps out with the kids. Yeah. Um, but I think, like, you know, the, the fact that it is, it is a bit of a left field name, the stuff around makes me think that there is kind of something in it really because as I say it, it just seems a strange kind of putting two and two, two together one for me so and but he did impress in the other 21 World Cup he looked good there you know kind of was was, was a key man for, for, for Spain really and so I don't know I think I think there maybe is something in it. I think they'll be looking at it um, as a possibility you know in terms of if they, if they can get at the price down really and, and we've seen what's happened with prices generally kind of this summer and you know when you know, where, where does we associate that, that kind of numbers with someone who's going to be kind of one of your best players, isn't it? Where it is actually, you know, you're looking at what Man City are doing, kind of, you know, this summer, the 30, 40 million pound players for them are just, are just allowed to keep them ticking over, essentially. Mm. Mm. Are just allowed to sort of come in and out. So we'll have to see. We'll see what, the, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But I would, I would imagine that, that Liverpool, if they are interested, uh, you know, are certainly looking to pay lower than that. But I don't think this, 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 this is a Vigi talk as well, and I can't see that. Yeah. That seems a bit jog. I'm going to. <laughs> I think. Uh, what you got? Yeah, what you, what you jog rating from one to five? <laughs> well, no, 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 Four Rigi's. <laughs> uh, we have to honour honour Mo. Mo's away ill, isn't he? Liz? He is. Oh. Mo's get well soon, Mo. Wherever you might we be. Miss you. Under your duvet. Um, we normally rate uh, the likelihood of these rumours becoming reality on the scale of one to five Mo's. One Mo being unlikely, five being very likely. But I think it's better to say, let's rate it on the likely... On, on the jog scale. On the, <laughs> on the pricey scale. No, on the do you, do you want it to happen? Do you think it'd be a good signing for Liverpool scale? Yeah, I, I, I think it would be a good signing. I think um, anyone who's going to come in as a potential cover <laughs> for Andy Robertson's got a tough job on their hands. But I think what John's just said is actually a really interesting point. Is that I feel like Liverpool, I think as fans, we're very quite we're quite humble in a way as to, you know, Man City is so used to spending this money on, on defenders for fun. Like their back line, they've got about six players that can come in and all of them are worth fifty million plus yeah. pretty much. Um and and you know, they, they don't play week in, week out. No. 
and maybe we are being a little bit too romantic about it and maybe that is the price that we've got to pay to get someone decent because Andy Robertson can't play every single game and that's not to say that... Um, I'm going to pin you down though, how many moves? How many moves? Okay, wanting sorry. To how much I'd want to, want it to happen? Well, I want a really good cover for Andy Robertson, so I'm going to go four moves. Four moves. Just a three for me, Rob. Just a three. But this scale's better than the, the previous scale, where Dan Austin managed to give one. Because I'd go, what's the likelihood of this happening, Dan? And he'd go, one mo. And that was every single one we went through these names. So this gives a bit more spice, I think. Yeah. <laughs> let's Dan Austin ruins everything. He, he spoils everything. Yeah. Hi, Dan. Uh, let's move on to the midfield. Uh, and I have the names in front of me now. Uh, Danny Caballos, can we call it that? Caballos, I don't know. Poll 36% of the vote. Uh, Savage, who had two former names I won't pronounce, has 18% of the vote. Mario Lamina got 6%, and in first place, Philip, Felipe Coutinho. Oh, did I pronounce that right? 40% of the vote. Okay, John, where do we start with this one? Okay, look, everyone, I don't think it's gonna happen. Would you want it to happen? Would he be a, would, would he be a good fit into the current Liverpool squad? Yeah, I think he would be, and I think, you know, we, I talked a little bit earlier about, about the values and about prices kind of going up and up and up. And up. It, it might become a point where Coutinho becomes good value. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It might become because I think if Barcelona are looking to cut the losses on him, I think they'd have to accept that um, because of his wages and because, you know, he, he hasn't worked out that they probably have to accept a little bit less mm. than what they paid. So say you're looking £80 million, £90 million for Coutinho. If, if, if Harry Maguire ends up going for that, then yeah. suddenly you're like, well, well you know, Phil Coutinho become, becomes from someone who is, who is very expensive to, to someone who, who represents good value. And I think there's so many, you know, unknowns in transfers, isn't it? We're talking about sort of someone like Junior Firpo, is he gonna come in, what's his what is what's his ceiling, what's his actual quality, yeah. will he will he settle in Liverpool as a city, will he settle in the Premier League? Someone like Coutinho who who you know what you're gonna get from, who you know will fit in well with this side, and I think he still will. You know he's got he's got friends here, you know, he was he knows where the Asda is and exactly, the Tesco on Mother exactly, Avenue. Exactly, yeah, yeah. He knows what Isle the Sugar's on, doesn't yeah. he? It's important. It's important all this <laughs> stuff and so and so I think I think I'm sure the door will always be half open for Phil Coutinho because I think Jurgen Klopp's that sort of manager. And I think I, th I think although there was there was little bits of a funny business going on, I don't think he's burned his bridges too much. You know, and I, so I think it might I don't think, you know, the despots kinda of get him back, I don't think it's one they're actively pursuing, but I think it might come to the become a situation where it starts to make more sense than that. I mean, there was a lot of fans, I think, have assumed that Klopp had had enough of the player by the end of the saga because he did agitate. Well, certainly his agent did via the media. But after he went, there was, there was a lot of talk. Klopp came out and said, look, we and the, me, I and the club offered him a lot of money to stay. They definitely wanted him to stay that January. They, hadn't, they didn't say, and shut the door behind you. No, and um, the thing is, I think if you're Jürgen Klopp, like we say, we, I don't think we actually know what happens. And mm. I think if Phil Coutinho, who was at the club for a good couple of years, weren't he? It's not as if he just stayed for one or two years, then yeah. got off. He was there for a while. Um, and a, a giant like Barcelona comes in, and as a South American lad, you mm. know, that's probably a dream come true for him. And in a way, I feel like he probably couldn't turn it down, depending yeah. on how he approached Klopp and said, listen, this is my dream. Uh, I know you want me to stay, and, and I love this club. I don't know if he'd done that. And he just basically said, Barcelona's just too big for me to turn down. I don't know. Uh, but I'm with John. It doesn't seem like there was too much upset. There was that time where he where he had the the famous back yeah. injury, um, which was the only thing really I saw him um, playing up playing up about. And he, he come back and he and he played brilliantly up until he left. We know he fits the team. We know he fits yeah. the city. Uh, and you know I, I I heard it last season. I don't know about you two, but I heard it last season. Sometimes when we were struggling for a goal, and you just hear that murmur from somewhere, you're thinking, don't That's say my it, dad. don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> then someone goes could do with Coutinho, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you said it, you said it now, but I understand it because um, he used to help us unlock teams sometimes and get us goals in tricky situations. As a player, I'd have him back, depending on his attitude, I'm going to leave that one up to Jürgen Klopp, I think. Okay, so the Mo rating in the you'd have him back rating, is that like a four Mo's? Uh, no, I'm, I want to do a like a two hedging. and a half, three. Okay, it's yeah. fine. We're all, we're all about variety. John? Oh, I'm four, Bob. You're all I'm, in. I'm four. We're not quite all in, but... Uh, I think, well, yeah, it's 80% yeah. like in it. Yeah, but I'm in. Um, it's pretty in. Phil will always have a place for me. I, 
I'd go to town if I thought we were getting Phil Coutinho back. I just think he's a world-class player. I think it'd be amazing to have him back. It's not going to happen, and yet stranger things have happened. OK, let's move on to the forward. And we put in front of you as choices. What do we put in front of you? James Rodriguez, who got 14% of your vote. Maxi Gomez, who's been courted by West Ham, 9%. Mario Icardi got 29%. And <laughs> unsurprisingly, and I knew this when I put the name forward, in first place, Everton. It's the first time you'll ever see Everton. Everton. <laughs> In the first place, Everton. Uh, technically, uh, John, his name is Everton Souza Suarez, which okay. seems to add a bit of spice to it. Uh, he's born the 22nd of March, 1996. He's had a really good Copper America, hasn't he? I think he's top scorer. Uh, I'd never heard of him until this summer. He's got a funny hairdo, but all the talent in the world. Yeah, looks a good player. Obviously, he, he plays his football out in Brazil. Uh, not many of us are watching, you know, Brazilian League football week by week, so he was a name that you know, caught the eye for, for, for obvious reasons and then, and then for his playing ability. I think, you know, you look at his record in Brazil, it's, it's good. I think he's had three good seasons now, goal scoring, so it's not like he's, you know, he's had a few good games and then suddenly been thrown in the national team, which does happen occasionally mm. uh, for, for Brazil. Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's got three good seasons for Gremio under his belt now and you feel like a move to, to Europe will happen. So why not Liverpool? You know, he linked up well with Firmino. You know, there's a lovely little back heel assist and all that, wasn't there? And, yeah. You know, he looks like a player who could be versatile, could could play across the front three for us. Um, and as I say, he's got he's got obviously the, the link up with Firmino already. And they might find there's a bit of value here. I think generally speaking, I think clubs might start looking around in, in slightly more unusual places for, for footballers if, if value is kind of what they're interested in. You know, prices are just going up and up and up. And, and you know, you're looking at in, the, in the Premier League now, you're seeing, you know, is a Tyrone Mings going £28 million? It's such a lot of money for someone who was on loan because he couldn't get his game at Bournemouth and suddenly mm. they're, they're getting £28 million for him. And, and so the... I think I think clubs might start looking a bit further afield. You know, who is that in South America? I think in the past it was always the case of for, for English clubs, I'll let someone else take a chance on him mm. first, and then and then, and then and then see how he gets on in European football, see how he gets on in the Bundesliga, and then we'll take him there. But clubs might decide to be a bit more proactive now and might go, no, we we will get in there because maybe some South American clubs aren't, aren't quite demanding as much money, or, or or you know things like that. You can get yourself you know a bit a bit, a bit better value out there. So I wouldn't be surprised if they are looking at him. I wouldn't be surprised if in a boardroom not far from here, a guy called Mosher is going, get me Everton at any <laughs> price. Because <laughs> just because of the, f the pure fume that they could not deal with. But anyway, I mean, you watch a lot of Brazilian football, I know. Yeah, I'm a Brazilian <laughs> football expert. She's actually, always Rob. got it on in the office. Always yeah. got it on in the office. Um, seriously, what do you think? One for us? Why not? Um, I, I'm like John, it's one of those I hadn't really heard of him. So the I, I was looking at like the team sheets for the Copa America just to see if like Firmino was getting his game. Um, I don't know. I don't know enough about Brazilian football to, to say if Neymar was in the squad, would he would he have got a start in place? Maybe he would have. I, I actually don't know. But it seems like he's had a good couple of seasons, top scorer in the Copa America. Um, and I've read that he's like a, he's more of a left. He's been playing like a bit of a left winger, like on the more on the left hand side. Um, and also, apparently, AC Milan are really interested in him. That seems to be the main rumour. Oh. Uh, and he's saying there's still a European giant. Um, but also, like, if, if he's looking at AC Milan, you know, they're, they're banned from Europe next season, aren't they? They, they, they can't compete in the, the Europa League. What well, that was into? No, it's AC, is isn't it? it? Yeah. Is it, it is AC, isn't it? It's yeah, it's AC. I'm sure it's, it's AC. Really anyway. <laughs> um, and you know, so would you be looking at a team that's not in Europe and who are a little bit on the way in? I don't know. Um, but it feels a bit like who's that name last year that no one had heard of until about a year, eighteen months ago? Malcolm. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Malcolm. He was going to go to Brazilians Spur have mad names. Like, don't they? Was Hulk and Fred Brazilian? <laughs> Hulk yeah. and Fred Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 from Sao Paulo. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was good. He was yeah, good, good sense of spider man really. <laughs> He's absolutely awesome. Goalie, I should say. Um, I, I think um, I also quite like the idea of um, so he's obviously played with Firmino, and I think. Sorry. What do you think about Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> really pleased with himself. Maybe we should just end the program there. Uh, sorry, but I think it, it's like the, the conversation about Delit maybe going to Barcelona because De Jong is there having the mates. There, there is a bit of a factor, and I think if you watch the Copa America, seeing that they link up quite well, and especially if Phil Coutinho is on his way with the four moves, you know, we could have a nice little uh, little thing yeah. going on, couldn't we? You can't have too many Brazilians in this day and age. John, how many? Well, okay, on the on the most scale, I'd be wanting him scale. I got four again. You want him that bad? 
four moves for Everton. <laughs> I don't want five moves. I want Everton. I want, <laughs> I want Everton on, on the fields of Anfield Road. Time and time again. Uh, I think that's all we've got time for. Thank you very much. It's been a fun transfer request, especially for me and my own jokes and laughing at them. <laughs> and I hope Mo's enjoyed it in his sick bed. We'll see you all again real soon. Yeah.